Recently, I've been grinding out Dragon's Dogma pretty hard, mostly to get those cool rings that can buff your skills for different vocations. Well, guess which one I got? Brain Splitter. I finally got the ring that turns Strider's Skull Splitter skill into an even deadlier attack. Thus followed some of the fastest boss kills I've done yet, and with the proper setup, I took down Bitter Black Isle with ease. This is my best Strider build, and for those interested, I'm going to go over how to set it up. The footage for today is on Normal and Bitter Black Isle, and in the very last fight, I finally reached level 200. Also, I didn't wear my cloak for the video, because if you don't know, Brain Splitter makes the cloak really wonky. But let's check out how absolutely insane Strider builds can be. First off, I want to go over equipment, as the weapons are a big part of this. I used what I believe are called the Frame Blades, which have the highest strength rating in the game. I then used a fully upgraded Rusted Bow. The Rusted Bow allows me to inflict Torpor very quickly, which makes every single fight a joke. Especially with Brain Splitter, as enemies just can't keep up with you. Now, unfortunately, due to the weapon being a starter item, it has trouble staggering tough opponents like dragons. I like to keep the Darkening Storm Bow on me as well so I can switch if I need to. For the most part, I just stick with the Rusted Bow, because our main source of damage is from the daggers. But sometimes you hit enemies like Liches, and a better bow is a little bit easier. These weapons allow us to be very versatile in combat, dishing out high amounts of damage and stagger up close, after slowing everything from afar. It's a very easy way to play the game, although due to strength being our main source of damage, we have trouble with enemies like Spirits, those orb-like creatures that attack you and suck out your life. It's hard to damage them even if your pawn enchants your weapon. As for armor, I really couldn't find that much from the DLC that was pretty good. It seems most of it doesn't buff your strength, so I went with what felt the most useful. The Hood of Shadow is from Bitter Black Gear, and it extends the duration of equipped skills. My Chainmail Bracers increase strength by 3, and I have the Cursed King's Belt to stagger enemies faster. The belt comes in handy as far as I can tell, and is dropped often enough from the gear and BBI as well. I decided on the Gloves of Might for my hands as they increase the wearer's speed while clinging to any object. These are rewarded to the player if they get the quest to defeat a griffin. It's story related, so harder to miss than other quests. Brain Splitter is of course where most of our damage is coming from, and you don't cling to enemies much when doing this skill. However, I much prefer to climb certain enemies, often dragons and definitely Damon's second phase. So in those cases, it really helps out to have these on. The Seeker Tights I have on are really only for looks, but the Assault Boots are huge. They're from BBI Armor Level 3 and increase my strength by 39 when fully upgraded. They're extremely cool looking, likely made out of dragon scales or something. And with some spikes on the feet, they're perfect for climbing monsters. I didn't wear the cloak due to Brain Splitter, but the one I'm using is Sovereign's Mantle, and it increases strength by 13 when fully upgraded. So far, it's the best cloak stat-wise and makes you look kingly. Complete the Wages of Death 3 quest, or loot it from BBI Armor Level 2. Finally, we get to the rings. Usually this is where you change up the gameplay quite a bit and only having two available at any time limits you to some build variation. The first ring I have I don't use all the time, but do be sure to bring it with you wherever you go. It's the ring of desiccation and it prevents your lantern from going out if you get wet. Most of BBI water can be avoided, but the last few sections of the dungeon are filled with water and this is almost required to not fight in pitch black. You can use it for those areas and then just switch back after. Of course, I have the Strider's Band, which is what increases my Helm Splitter to Skull Splitter. It basically gives the skill more hits per second and thus more damage. It also increases Stepping Stone, but I don't use that skill here. Make sure you and your pawn are both Striders when purifying Bitter Black Gear level 3, and you should be able to get one in a few tries. My other ring is a Master Ring, which increases strength by 96. The other stat on it is extra, but the Master Rings come with a variety of strength increases. 96 is the highest I've been able to get, but I've heard you can get up to 100 as the max. Of course, we took Strider for our vocation as it's the Climbing Monsters class and the only one with Skull Splitter. Striders are naturally better at climbing monsters, gaining more damage when they do so. They use daggers and short bows. Mostly using daggers as the bow skills are not nearly as good as anything that rangers have. This class also gains double jump and dodge roll which really frees up combat. In fact, the dodge roll is my favorite for getting around as you don't need to waste stamina by running. 
The skills I have on daggers are 100 Kisses, Skull Splitter, and Instant Reset. 100 Kisses can be used while clinging to monsters, making it a must-have. Skull Splitter we're turning into Brain Splitter for the most damage, and if you don't know, that's the jump spin I've been doing constantly in the background. Lastly, I have Instant Reset. One of the best skills as it resets you to a neutral position, meaning any skill or attack that places you on the ground or unable to move can be stopped. I love it for getting knocked down as you instantly stand back up instead of laying there for a bit. You can also use it efficiently with Brain Splitter as that skill has a pause animation after using it. So this really speeds up combat and gets you out of danger. For your bow, there's only one skill that we need and that's Fivefold Flurry. We use this to inflict Torpor with our rusted bow in seconds. It usually takes around 3 or 4 shots, letting you switch back to daggers and deal damage quickly. I also usually throw on Mighty Bend as it's got some decent damage, but the third skill is up to you. Finally, we come to the Augments, which are how you change up your builds. These are going to grant different boosts to damage and help you climb better or escape from battle. They require different vocations to get them all, but once you have them, your damage can be higher than normal. Here are the ones I used and which vocation they come from. Ferocity is from the Warrior vocation and it increases the power of core skills by 10%. This makes our regular attack deal much more damage. Impact is from the Warrior Vocation and it grants an additional 30% knockdown power. I use this as Brain Splitter instantly drops even dragons with enough stagger. Potential is from the Magic Archer Vocation and it grants 100 extra stamina. As we're mainly using skills to deal our damage, more stamina is necessary. Eminence is from the Strider Vocation and it increases jumping attack damage by 30%. Brain Splitter does not get this damage bonus even though it jumps. However, using the skill after jumping will grant the extra damage, making you absolutely destroy health bars even without Parryettes. Clout is from the Warrior Vocation and it increases strength by 20%. As you can see, we're trying to max out strength to get its highest to make Brain Splitter go burr. Behemoths is from the Fighter Vocation and it grants an additional 10% more strength. These passive skills are from the more physical based vocations, but they're massively going to increase your damage when using a strength based weapon. As these daggers deal the most strength for daggers, it really makes our damage go up. Add in some parryettes and the bosses you fight get defeated in less than 10 seconds. A lot of players are going to like to min max to get the most damage from their vocations. Now I didn't do this because I wanted to play as every single vocation and I leveled up a lot for magic because of this but still you can see the damage that this dish is out. If you would like to get the most strength for higher damage, I have been told that Fighter for the first 10 levels and Assassin from 10 to 200 grants a ton of strength. However, your health will be lower than in most cases. I recommend taking Strider for a while and then doing at least 40 levels as Assassin. I probably did around 40 levels in both and then everything else was whatever I felt like at the time. I made sure to get a little out of Assassin, but ultimately it came down to what felt fun. And I don't think I really need to tell you how much damage this build does. I mean, you've been watching the mayhem since the start of this video. Start off inflicting Torpor with the Rusted Bow and then spam Brain Splitter until everything dies. It's a very simple playstyle, but extremely fun due to its raw power. I will mention that Living Armor sucks with this setup because you instantly take them to half health, but then they're nearly immune to physical damage. I often skip these guys, especially here where it's just me and one pawn, but it is going to be nice to have some magic from other pawns for such situations. I made my personal pawn into a healer, mostly. She has a ring that increases the healing and all of her augments are for increased magic attacks. Make sure to give your mage the ice spike and a bit of lightning damage. Both come in handy when you want her to fight. It's likely your pawn will just heal though, as that's the priority for her. As for your other two pawns, I like Fighter and Sorcerer. Sorcerers have incredible damage from magic attacks, allowing you to defeat living armor rather than running away from them. The fighter will be used to distract enemies, allowing you to do anything you want without being focused down. I really prefer this setup to anything else that I've tried, especially since you yourself have ranged damage and can climb monsters efficiently. Your party should be supporting you more than anything else. And there you have it, my best Strider build in Dragon's Dogma. I really had a lot of fun with this one, especially after I tried a warrior build and clearly did not know what I was doing. This allowed me to shut off my brain and let the daggers whirl. 
You can make this work without the gear itself, but that ring really upgrades Skull Splitter into a DPS machine. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem super easy to use against Damon's second phase, as you can't hit his weak spot, but that's why we have Scarlet Kisses after all. If anything, this goes to show that you can make the game easy with correct gear. It's pretty tough at times, but with a good party of pawns or a cheat setup like this, you will be the monster and not the beasts that you slay. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I would greatly appreciate a like. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Shall await you in the crucible.